This is a play and it's called On the Verge. And it's not just for women, but for men too, because they might learn something if they see the play. I'm going to read a few words. Playwright George Bernard Shaw would have congratulated playwright Eric O. Myers' magical and progressive enlightening play On the Verge. That is, if he were still living. Shaw was a champion in his Victorian day for women equality rights in a world dominated by short-sighted men who eagerly choose to domestic and political power for their own advantage. He was famous for writing roles for actresses. On the Verge is a remarkable reminder that the forces that deny women of equality may be currently rumbling in our present backyard. Mystery. In the dark, it was a quotidian trick for the llamas to raise their body temperature by mere mental exertion, sheer gentle will. They would sleep all night in the snowbanks. At dawn, they would douse themselves in freezing streams. Then, ice blew in on the verge of extinction. They would sit lotus and meditate ferociously. Instantly, steam would sizzle off them into clouds, rising above their furrowed brows. In an hour, their ropes would be dry as toast and neatly pressed. In the blue shadow of Crystal Mountain, I watched a fawn shaman wrap himself in his black cape, fold himself thrice, become a giant origami crow, flap, flap, flap his wings, rise into the sky, and sail across the saffron moon. It's all about imagination. It's all about three women who decide to go on a journey, a trek, and find out as they're going along that they're not just moving in space and moving in time. Oh, what a mystery! <laughs> a jewel too. It'll do. Puts one in mind of the great cloud force of the Orinoco. Not annoying. Not annoying at all. Ladies, show me what the bush. It starts in the late 1880s. Okay. And ends up in 1955. And they discover as they are going along that they are finding things that they never heard of before. Had I been wearing trousers, <laughs> I would have been pierced to the core, done for. Instead, I found myself sitting on a dozen razor sharp spikes in comparative comfort. <laughs> a good stiff petticoat is the only thing for punji sticks. <laughs> Trousers in the trumpets. Oh, jungles. <laughs> in the Himalayas. Trousers are the Hello? <laughs> Eric Overmeyer is a terrific writer. And he has done a thing with starting with the Victorian language. Words that I would call archaic, words that I've never heard before. I spent hours with the dictionary, <laughs> as did my cast, um, to know what we were talking about at times. Right. When you hear it in context, when you see it acted out, it makes perfect sense. But if you take it from a script and you're reading the words, you go, oh my gosh, what does that one mean? You know, what does this mean? How, how is it used? And it's beautiful to have that kind of a challenge when you're doing a play. Around us, the silent storms of objects from the future swirl. A starlight from the new world. Nan Worthington playing Mary. Ladies, I don't know about you, but I am feeling a definite, a palpable yearning for the future. Oh, Mary, yes! <laughs> Alexandra Gould who is playing Fanny. The future looms as steady and stable as a tabletop. I anticipate we shall find a year which suits me perfectly, 
and settle in for a long refreshment. I shall have a bath. There will be a post office. Oh, Grover, I feel as if we are on the verge of something grand. First time after it will tell me about uh, Jennifer Cummings. One of the ecstasies of hiking in the Himalayas was to crest a ridge and suddenly confront the infinite surround. Rivers and mountains without end, untouched, glistening with possibility. We are climbing a spire of time. The topography of the future is coming into view, unmapped and unnamed, distant, vista shining. You must not shrink. You must embrace it with all your heart. There were three such women. There was one, the anthropologist, one, the one who climbed the mountains in the Himalayas, uh, another who did Africa. Uh, so that you hear this in their characters. He took the real lives of three women, Victorian women, who, be, who were explorers at that time, and then built them into the So these game. are real, these three women? They're taken from real women. They're taken from real women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, yeah. So Mary? Mary is... Middle age, single, <clears throat> self educated, independent. Uh, father, I was, I think she says her father was a doctor. And uh, she takes off from, to do, to explore, to become uh, an independent woman of the world. And Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex, the character, Alexandra, the character is the youngest. And she's the one who became involved with the spiritual world of, of the Dalai Lama and the Eastern cultures. And uh, she talks about that during, during their trek together. Um, she is, uh, ends up uh, writing rock and roll music. <laughs> and Fanny is the kind of straight-laced, um, formal, S a little bit severe, serious, uh, again, a um, woman who had been to Africa and did some exploring. And so they decide to do this, you know, three of them together, no Sherpas, no porters, just carry what you got and go off on this trip. Now there's another actor and he plays multiple uh, parts. <laughs> personalities. Yeah, and who is that? Personality. Don Kilmore plays mm -hmm. uh, plays the eight different parts. He plays uh, Grover, Fanny's husband, who visits her in a dream. He plays a yeti. He plays a troll at the bridge. He even plays the Madame, does he? Doesn't he? He plays a, an Oriental uh, Chinese woman. He plays a kid. A teenage boy at a, a gas station plays the lounge lizard Nikki at the at the end. Uh, Alphonse the cannibal. He does a marvelous job of <laughs> switching characters. You are so outgrowing impertinent. Oh, my sister has a big like that. <laughs> Does she enjoy it? She loves it a lot. <laughs> How do you locate your dirigible? Follow me over, girl! Please? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Take the second exit on the line and look for the burn shade signs. <laughs> oh my, I think. I think I got something wrong. I think I should not have had that last piece of tape press. Oh boy, it's uh, it's too soon to have to stop. Oh boy. I'm not feeling very well. I must I must go. Uh, thank you for their chow. Perhaps you'll come over and eat with me sometime. I make a nice dining uh, dining up and Mayo is my favorite. Uh, have you ever had mayo fritters? You know we should take recipes sometime. <laughs> Could you guide us to the dirigible? We'll pay wages. I am not well. I can eat this elephant out of my system. Perhaps we'll see each other again someday, my little angel. I agree with you. Open my steam. Big juju. And adds a lot of wonderful humor to the play. Play is Lynn 
whimsical and colorful and um, would you call it would you call it a, a, a comedy or yeah. a dramedy or what would, what would more you call comedy, it? I think. more comedy it's light it's light oh it sheds me light Terra incognita cannot be utterly benighted if one can get the New York Times. <laughs> a Kodak of a man. Behind him an array of snow mountains. His arms are spread so. The caption reads, President Nixon, Grand Tetons, June 1972. Quote, I had trout from the lake for dinner last night. They were so good I had them again for breakfast. I haven't had anything but cereal for breakfast since 1953. <laughs> End quote. 1953? 1972? Printer's errors. Two such errors in one tiny Times article. Not credible. Dickensian character. Looks like something off the bottom of the seabed. <laughs> I think he wanted to talk uh, about feminism. I think he wanted to remind people that even before the 60s there were women who marched to their own drums who were brave enough to get up and get out and go do something wonderful and meaningful in the world and did it fearlessly and bravely and left journals and records and books and, and articles about the things that they discovered um, that are with us today. There were early anthropological studies, and um, I think you want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> These must be new plays from Terra Incognita, indigenous drama. How would you characterize private moment? <laughs> <laughs> you won't by any chance Mr. Coffee, are you? I guess first of all I'd like them to say I had a wonderful time watching that show. Um, and, and walk away feeling good. Feeling like they've been entertained well. What did you learn as a director in this show? You directed a lot of plays up mm -hmm. to this point. Anything new? Uh, I worked black box in this one or gray box, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, we um, are acting our way through things that the girls do not have a rope bridge, but they will walk across one for us. And they do not have a long, high cliff to climb, but you will see them climb one. Uh, and working with actors to get that reality to the audience is, is fun and challenging. It's challenging for a director and challenging for the actor. It has to be done well enough that the, uh, the audience is going, oh yeah, I can feel the rope and we're climbing with them. Oh, I hope they don't fall. You know, <laughs> they have to be able to give that. And, and I think my actors are better than that. Now, tomorrow's opening night. Yes. So, uh, about through your rehearsal process, at what point uh, going backwards, yeah. were you ready for for a performance a week ago, two days ago, a week and a half ago? We're going to be ready for a performance tomorrow night. You're going to be ready tomorrow night. We were ready. I mean, we could have done. We oh. did. Oh, yeah, we did fine. Last Yesterday night. night. Yeah. Yeah. We did beautifully last night. We did quite well a week ago. They got off book early. They had to. There's no way you can chop your way through a job with a book in your hand uh, and a machete so, 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 so they worked hard. For, for all actors and directors, I think that is one of the most important things is when uh, a cast uh, comes on board a play, number one responsibility, get off book. Yeah. It makes it easy for the director and for everybody. Everybody in the show, absolutely. And, you, and, and, your, and your cast did that. Yep. Yeah. They worked well. very hard at it, but they did it. And they had a lot of lines to learn and a lot of words that... But did you know that the Nevada loony bins are full of catatonic blue-haired old ladies doing this? Oh. 
Well, I can see that you are a happy director, so oh, yeah. I, I feel I feel good about what I'm going to see tomorrow night. We had a wonderful preview at the Horizon Bookstore oh. on Saturday, mm -hmm. and the front row was eight young boys. I think there were eight sitting there watching, and they were all laughing. They were all having a good time. I'm like, yes, you know, they were buying it, and the adults were buying it. So yeah, I, I think putting this show on a 16 by 16 foot stage, I think we did it. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. I'm, I, I'm, I've got good people working with me and those actors have been just marvelous, so that makes my job. Thank you.